Now about time again. This is a review item. I should be the other stuff, we'll find out. Stick around. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you've not been here before. As usual, there'll be links down below for items that I can give you links for. So make sure you check those out for more information or if you want to buy one. It's transistors. Two C one nine six nines. Now the question is, are these real? Are these fake? Are they remade? Now these are brand new, you can see how shiny these are. Are they the real deal? I don't know. They're probably remade, I mean they're not marked as being Mitsubishi, they've actually got an H on there, so it's like someone has made these. These weren't that expensive and I just got a few just to try them out, so when I do get the opportunity to install one of these in a CB radio, then I'll do that. And if you don't know what these actually are, these are final amplifier transistors for CB, so these work on like 27 megahertz kind of thing. That's what they're designed for anyway. The original 2SC1969 has been long out of production. Can't get the originals anymore. Well, maybe you can still find some new old stock, rarely, but usually what you see are fakes. And they're actually marked as, you know, being Mitsubishi parts and they're not. Now I've actually purchased some in the past, and you still can find some. This is my parts drawer with 2SC1969s in. Now, that's definitely a fake one, it's got the wrong shape on it. Some of these are real ones. The problem is I, that's a fake one. Um, this one here is a fake one. They do actually still kind of work. That's a fake one. But I do have real ones. Here we go, here's a real one. Try and get it out. That's a real 1969. Okay, this is an original one. This one is not a fake. You know, I do actually have a few original real ones left. I think I'll go back. I don't know, probably half a dozen or so. As I always do, as you know I do, which is part of the mail bag, is that when I can get things, I'll buy a bunch of them. And that's what happened here. But I also bought a bunch of these fake ones. And the idea is that I'm going to work my way through these fake ones, see how feasible they are to use. I mean, sometimes they actually can be usable. Depends on what they're actually used as. Sometimes they're used as drivers and you can actually get away with it. But that's definitely a fake one there. This is fake. Fake markings. So, you know, that is a real one. Sometimes you can tell just by looking at them, sometimes it takes a bit more investigation and a lot of a closer look. There's a few keys here to actually understand which, when it's a real one, when it's a fake one. Now these, obviously, are not marked as Mitsubishi. Right? So this is the H marking, so this is somebody else's manufacturing. They're not trying to pass themselves off as the Mitsubishi part, so the chance this would actually work. There's also a chance it's a completely different part, but we don't know. I'll have to try it one day. I'm actually going to be doing some CV stuff, I think. I think of got the inclination to do some radio work again so I've got a couple of videos um, which you would have probably seen by now actually but I'm going to be doing some CB stuff I'm getting the motivation to do something in ah finally magnets excellent now the project I need these for which means I now get to find out if I've got the right ones or not I've been waiting for ages for magnets anyway this is a light curtain for a timer system. I showed this previously, and what I was actually doing was going to make a new switch. This is a clip, it's supposed to be in a slot here, and this one's actually quite bad condition. The, the magnet's all rusted on it and everything, so I'm actually going to replace that. But I designed a new switch mechanism, and for that I need these magnets to go in there. Now, I actually ordered the magnets about two months ago. They never arrived. New Zealand Post lost them. They left the airport, never arrived at the depot. So somehow they got lost between the airport and the depot they're going to. Never arrived. So that was over a month ago, or two months ago now, they just dis disappeared. And it still showed us left the airport. But the idea is it goes in here, in this slot. So you mould around this. I'll pull this one off, I'll show you. So this one here has got the magnet inside here. All right, so there's the magnet in there. You can see it's all rusty and degraded, because these are used outside. And the idea is I get a new magnet, and I'm gonna make a new piece. Like I said, I've already designed it. I've got a mould around this existing magnet, and the idea is that this magnet will then go into this slot here. You watch up here, as it comes around the slot, activates a switch. It's got a re-switch in there, and the magnet turns it on and off. No, orientation doesn't seem to matter. Either way, magnetic feels good enough. So, here it is. So, excellent. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you've not been here before. These are some... 2.1 mil DC jack cable. So the idea of these is I need to make a charging station. Now in the motorhome, which we use for events, which currently aren't happening because of level four restrictions and stuff. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, COVID. It's a bit. I need to make a charging station, so what I've done is I've purchased a bunch of these cables. That gives me leeway to plug all these devices in to charge them up. So I'm going to have like a central power supply inside a big box, which all the web server things in, which I've mentioned previously. And that will have, say, a big 12 volt power supply. And that runs all of these. So I've got a charging station. I'll just plug all the devices in and charge them all up. Because these things need to be charged every two or three shows, really. I like to do it every two or three shows. Um, they do actually last about four, five shows, maybe. So they do last quite well, but I don't want to run them down too low. I don't want to have them ready to go because I do actually have an octopus cable right now. It's like a splitter. It's got these on it. It's basically one of these, an extension with plugs and everything on it. It's just um, a five, I think it is. I showed it previously in the mailbag a while ago. I've been using that, but it's it's only quite short wires and it's a bit messy and hard to deal with. So I want to build a better solution. So that's all part of that. These go out fairly quickly, actually. Oh, what did I actually buy? These look very similar to one I've already got. That's promising. So this one I already have. And yeah, it looks the same. It looks identical. Excellent. So I'm going to show you what this does. Let's plug it in. So I've got an Arduino Pro Mini over here, and this is running this. So this is like my potential version of Clive's supercomputer. Now I actually had this in the background in a couple of live streams, and nobody really talked about it. It's quite surprising. I thought someone had mentioned something, but uh, never mind. But the idea was I was going to put some lighting around my desk here and make it a bit more interesting in the background, and maybe do something with it. And I was thinking, well, I've only got one, so. I thought, ah, oh, that's not really enough, is it? So, I bought two more. Yeah, I want to do them now. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Alright, let's see what's in here. NF2985A IMM5X 3.3. So there's a 3.3 volt voltage regulators. I know exactly why I needed these. I can show you right now. It's on here because of this board. So this Arduino Pro Mini here, the built-in voltage regulator, for whatever reason, doesn't work. Now I've checked this across multiple boards of this particular lot I've got, which are all exactly the same, and not a single one of those voltage regulators actually work. So what you do on here is I just chucked on my own voltage regulator here. So it's dropping down from the raw 12 volts down to 5 volts in this case. This is a 5 volt one. But you can do 3.3 volts, and that's what these ones are. So I've actually ordered some different ones. I've got 3.3 volts. I've also ordered some 5 volt ones. So 5 volts and 3.3 volts. But uh, the idea is that these regulators will go onto these boards I've got and replace the ones which are already on them, which do not work. The original one I even took off the circuit board and tested it and it still wouldn't work, with it, not even on the board. So, I don't know what the story is, so I put my own regulator on here, this is what I had laying around just to get the job done, and um, that one's working fine, but yeah, I need to replace it with some proper ones. Right, last thing. Now this, I believe, is a review item. If it is what I think it is. Wireless microphones. So this company called Lensgo, so I'll be links down below for this thing, definitely. I'll be doing a review video on this thing, actually having a really close look at it. Comes in different colours as well, I believe this is the yellow version, but they come in black and white and stuff as well. Let's have a quick look at it. Now the reason I was tempted by this is, obviously as a YouTuber, you're always trying to do things to improve the quality of the videos. Audio is one of the main things you always want to improve upon. I've basically always used the in-camera audio, right? So the microphone is brought into my camera. It's what I generally use my videos, because I found in most cases that's what sounded best. So I've tried various wireless microphones and wired microphones in the past, and they just didn't really sound that good. My quest continues. So here is another version. It comes with a nice assortment kit here. It's like a giant. 
<laughs> That's pretty cool why they've got that. Like mimicking what's on the inside. Is that a charger? It is, it's got charging built in. So it's got charging built into the case here. RX and TX. It's even marked on here. And these are pretty cool. Alright. I did actually originally want a black one, but they were out of stock at the time. You know, current shortages worldwide and stuff causing problems, obviously. So I had to choose yellow instead, but that's fine. Is this magnetic? It is. Magnetic clips. So you clip that on and take it off. Nice. So that's receiver. Plus and minus. Output. USB-C charging. Power button. This is obviously the microphone because it's got the fluffy cat on the top of it. Which I'm guessing will come off as well. Here you go. It's a clip. There's the actual microphone there. It's also got a cable input as well. If you want to use a wired system instead. Translash card. So I guess it does internal recording as well. So if it loses signal, well, that would be awesome if it does that. You know, battery goes flat on the receiver or something, you may not notice straight away. Yeah, so at least if it's recording over here, it'd be quite nice. So, we shall see how that goes. I'll be um, playing with those and doing a proper review on those soon. So, it's got speaker inputs and outputs, USB cable here, which must go to a C. Yeah, there's a C plug in there, so USB A to USB C. It's got this magnetic disc as well, so I guess that's so if you want to stick that on clothing, you can just stick it through. Excellent. Probably not too exciting for most of you, but anyone who's a YouTuber might be interested in these things. Or, well, you know, you're recording video and that sort of stuff. <laughs> That's an interesting bit of design work. Don't forget to click like, subscribe if you've not been here before, click the bell icon too so you get notifications about my new videos. And I'll catch you in the next one, and maybe next time you'll hear me a little bit differently, because this will be working. Bye.